Diabolical Tales. Starring Jack Ferguson and another exciting story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. Many of the incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the actual experiences and authentic records of NSA Operative 132, who for many years has investigated the men from within the Earth. Star Jack Ferguson as Operative 132. My name is not important, but you can call me Operative 132, or just O-132. I work on an above top secret project called Agartha, and this is my story. In a moment, listen for Jack Ferguson as Operative 132, Government Man. But first, a word from our sponsor. Again? My husband is going to kill me if the carpets aren't clean. Darla, you need to try the new Amalgamated Technologies Model C Deluxe Vacuum. It's so powerful that it never gets jammed. I like the Model C Deluxe, but Ginger, it's not one of those more affordable vacuums. It's priced at $77.50. But you can pay as little as $5 a month with financing. Go pick one up and I'll check back with you in a few days. Well, what do you think? The Amalgamated Technologies Model C Deluxe Vacuum has changed my life. My husband hasn't raised his voice to me about the carpets in days. Darla! Oh, no. What now? <sighs> Let's just say I wish the Model C Deluxe could wash the bathroom mirrors as well as clean the carpets. <laughs> <laughs> The Model C Deluxe Vacuum is another great product from Amalgamated Technologies. Amalgamated is America! And now, Diabolical Tales. This above top secret report from Project Agartha is marked The Puzzle Amalgamated. The date was Thursday, April 13, 1953. It had been about three months since our last encounter with a sinister man from within the Earth named Xanth. A man who claimed he'd sworn to kill my partner FBI agent Cooper and I for stopping an evil plot to start World War III between the communist USSR and the good old USA. I was about to join Agent Cooper in his office at FBI headquarters. I had some news for him. Agent Cooper, I have some news for you. You found our missing man in black? No, but I brought you a cup of joe. Oh, thanks. What's the news? Yesterday, an informant called in to the local police from a payphone. Male voice. Said he'd seen a strange man, dressed all in black, wearing sunglasses, roaming around the Amalgamated Technologies building the past few nights. It got dropped into our laps because of Amalgamated Technologies' many defense contracts, and the fact that it could be one of our bogeys. You think it could be that guy Xanth? It's been nearly three months since he escaped from that train wreck. Maybe. Or the other one, our G-Man double agent, Zajim. We still don't have much on him. So what do we do, O-132? First, we'll head over to Amalgamated Technologies Building, see if we can find out if anything's been tampered with. Right, O-132. It's a measure of national defense. Amalgamated Technologies. It was notable because I had a previous encounter with another sinister man from within the Earth at this same location about nine months earlier. It didn't end well for him. And now we're following up with the powers that be at Amalgamated Technologies itself. Coincidence? We'll see. Wow. This place is really big. Sure is, Agent Cooper. We walked into the spacious lobby of their main building and headed for the receptionist's desk. Hello there, ma'am. 
Yes? Can I help you? I work for the National Security Agency, and this is Agent Cooper, FBI. We'd like to speak with someone in charge here. In charge? Well, that'd be James Moore, CEO. Yeah, that sounds right. We'd like to ask him a couple of questions. Mr. Moore is a very busy man. Only a few questions for a few minutes. It's a measure of national defense. Well, can I tell him what this is regarding? Well, ma'am, it's regarding communists. <gasps> communists? Heavens to Betsy! Give me a few minutes. I'll be right back. She got up and scurried back down the hall towards a series of boardroom doors. Agent Cooper and I scoped out the place in the meantime. And then we saw FBI Assistant Director Smith exiting a door down the hall and walk toward us. Smith was Agent Cooper's old boss at the FBI. And between you and me, I was starting to grow suspicious of his comings and goings. Agent Cooper and I shot each other a questioning look. What was he doing here? Operative 132, Agent Cooper. Assistant Director Smith. Didn't realize J. Edgar had an interest in amalgamated technologies. Just visiting a friend, 0132. I didn't realize he's in your kind of trouble. No trouble, Assistant Director. Just a few questions. He forced a smarmy smile and then nodded as he walked on past us. Have a good day, gentlemen. James Moore, CEO, will see you now. Agent Cooper and I were led into a large corner office. The man behind the desk was white, in his 50s, balding, and a little round around the belly. He also wore lots of gold. He stood and shook our hands. I'm James Moore, CEO of Amalgamated Technologies, and I'm very busy, so let's not waste time. Understood, Mr. Moore. I'm known as Operative 132, and this is Agent Cooper of the FBI. Agent Cooper? Mr. Moore. So what's all this about communists? Over the past few nights, we've had reports of a... Strange man dressed all in black who had been spotted around the corporate facility. A man dressed in black? And that makes him a communist? It's possible. We'd like to know if you've heard anything like this internally. No, uh, not that I can remember. We've got some security, but I'll triple it if we've got some commies trying to get into our corporate headquarters. Been working on anything lately that might be of interest to the, uh, communists? Now, are you kidding? Amalgamated Technologies is one of the five biggest companies in the United States of America. We've got defense contracts to produce tanks, planes, and guns. We produce consumer products, industrial products. And this is off the record, but we just helped out the Atomic Energy Commission with some problems they were having with their atom bombs. Everything we do is of interest to the commies. It's just like our slogan says. Amalgamated is America? That's right, Agent Cooper. Now, seriously, I have one of the biggest companies in America to run, so unless you're going to accuse me of being a communist, you G-men will have to leave. Just one more question, Mr. Moore. How do you know FBI Assistant Director Smith? What, so he's a communist now? I didn't say that, sir. Smith and I were in the war together. We saved each other's lives a couple times. He's my friend. He used to be my boss. And I'll bet he was a good one. He seems to have been under the weather lately. Oh? Why do you say that? Because that's what he told me. And he seems more inquisitive than he used to be. Now listen, if you government thugs are going to be roaming around here anyway, if you watch out for the communists and the liberals, I'll make it worth your while. No thanks, Mr. Moore. The federal government pays our salaries. We're not corporate security. Okay, then. Have it your way. But at a 52% corporate tax rate, you should be working for me. And I want you to keep those commies away from my corporate facility. We realized we'd need to get a better look at this supposed intruder, preferably in the act of lurking around the Amalgamated Technologies building. So we determined to stake out the location that night, and we went to Agent Cooper's apartment to have dinner with his wife, Kate Cooper. I'd never met her before. Honey, I'm home. Oh, hi, Agent Cooper. Kate, this is my new partner, Operative 132. You can call him O-132. Kate seemed a bit disheveled. 
While she smiled at me, I could tell by her body language that she already didn't like me. What's your real name, W-142? My name is not important, Mrs. Cooper, but you can call me O-132. No, really. Come on! It's just not important. Are you sure? O-132 is so phony. Not important. Kate, you know we can't tell you anything about what we do. That includes O-132's name. Even I don't know his first name. Well, anyway, I've prepared a top-secret dinner. But it's so top-secret that I can't hear any of it. So I'll leave you two to it. Hmm. Sorry about Kate. She's not been herself the last couple weeks. Oh, yeah. Say, did you hear about the Cincinnati Reds? No. What about them? They renamed them the Red Legs. Really? Yep. Guess they were afraid people would think the word Reds would equate them with communist sympathizers. Somewhere, Joe McCarthy is smiling right now. You don't get more American than baseball. You got that right. Let's eat, Agent Cooper. We got a long night ahead of us. We'll be back with Operative 132 in Diabolical Tales after a word from our sponsor. Charlie Legato is a private eye. Oh, some ladies call me a private dick. But he's also a world-traveled, high-class bartender. Hey there. What's your poison? Bruce Abernathy stars in Hey There, What's Your Poison? on the Dumont Television Network. Now move to Friday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I need a photograph of my wife with another man. She won't get any alimony from me. I think what you need is a Tom Collins. No, I need Charlie Legato. Hey, buddy, for the right price, you can have us both. Hey there, what's your poison? On Dumont, first with the finest in television. And now we're back with Jack Ferguson as Operative 132 in Diabolical Tales, Project Agartha. There I was on another stakeout. Stakeouts are among the most boring but necessary parts of working on above top secret government projects. On Project Agartha, it was no different. After receiving an informant's tip that a strange man dressed in black had been spotted lurking around the Amalgamated Technologies building, my partner Agent Cooper and I decided to check it out for ourselves. We'd already been there half the night, and I'd been spinning my wheels for the past couple hours about the old days. And I ended up writing over half of the 600 pages of the only official report that Project Grudge issued. It's still classified, by the way. Can't believe it's been four years already. And not one of them was an actual flying saucer with aliens from outer space. Eh, most of them were sun dogs, misidentified clouds, conventional aircraft. Okay, yeah. Ugh. I've got to go. Again? It's all that coffee. Hey, hey, hey. Try to take that in the alley, Agent Cooper. Yep. Better idea. While Agent Cooper took care of his business, some movement along the side of the street ahead of us caught my eye. After staring for a moment, there didn't seem to be anything. I flipped on the car's headlights to shine a little light on the situation, and, uh... Sure enough, there was somebody standing along the edge of the street about 50 yards up. I couldn't make out much except his silhouette. He was big and wearing a fedora, and it appeared that he wasn't moving. I looked over and saw Agent Cooper already had his Smith & Wesson 38 Special Standard Issue revolver drawn and ready for action, trained on the man down the street. I'm going to start the car and drive toward him. Move with me. Got it, 0132. 
I gently shifted into gear and started moving slowly up the road. Agent Cooper moved alongside me, his gun fixed ahead of him. As we got closer, the man suddenly moved out of the shadows and walked directly into the street ahead of us. He put one of his arms up to shield his eyes from the car's lights, but it was him. Xanth the Feared. Don't move, man in black! And he didn't, at first. Then seemed to straighten up. He was a big one, all right. I never really got a good look at him during our previous encounter, but now I could see he was almost twice as big as Agent Cooper. Perhaps against my better judgment, I wanted him to see me. I left the lights on, but I shut off the car and climbed out. We meet again, men in black. The big beast didn't move. I slowly walked around to the front of the car and then started advancing towards him. Agent Cooper was behind me with his gun aimed on this towering man in black. And then he spoke. You are intimidated by me, yes? Only by your size. You should be. You should feel fear. Xanth the feared, I presume? Operative 132, the pitiful. And Agent Cooper, the little sidekick. Little sidekick? Why don't you come quietly, man in black? We don't want any trouble from you. Oh? But trouble has found you. <laughs> Who is Zajim? It is of no consequence to you. Now. You must die! I saw the beam coming at us when I heard Agent Cooper fire off some rounds. I pushed myself towards him, knocking him down as the beam zipped through the air above us. Let's move! I picked up Agent Cooper, drew my M1911 sidearm, and pushed him towards the car. But just then, he was hit by a stray incinerator blast. And we unloaded on him. Both Agent Cooper and I fired multiple rounds off toward the man in black. I ran and ducked into an alley nearby. He went in the alley! Let's go! We rounded the corner into the alley to see the man in black trapped against a large fence. He was attempting to climb over it, jumping up on top of boxes. Agent Cooper and I nodded to each other and then raised our guns, moving down the alley toward him. Drop your weapon, man in black! He stopped and glared over at us, and one of his hands started moving toward his belt. <laughs> Agent Cooper fired off a shot that came inches away from Xanth's head. He stopped moving and stared down on us. You're under arrest. I am to be feared, surface dweller! Tell us why you've been wandering around the Amalgamated Technologies building. For your doom, surface dwellers! Revenge for Plan Zero! And in another swift move, this man in black drew something from his sleeve and cracked it in his hand, then tossed it onto the ground behind him, instantly covering the entire alley in a thick cloud of dark smoke. <coughs> we ran out of the alley to catch our breath. As we did so, the smoke cleared and we could see that Xanth was gone. Escaped? Again? Looks that way. Well, one thing's for sure. We haven't solved this puzzle yet. But we will find this Xanth the Feared, and learn why he's so interested in amalgamated technologies. Are you sure? Pretty sure, Agent Cooper. Whew. Now let's get a fresh cup of joe. Oh yeah, Xanth vaporized the car. Uh. Yep, we are missing the car. Well, it's 3.30 in the morning, so I guess we're walking. You really had me looking forward to another coffee. And I'm really gonna hate putting in a requisition for another car. We got no evidence. That Hudson is dust. Maybe they'll give us a Chrysler Windsor as a replacement. Keep on wishing, Agent Cooper. Our second encounter with the giant man dressed all in black known as Xanth only raised more questions. Unfortunately, we didn't have the answers yet. 
But that's how it is when you're working on an above-top-secret government investigation. Problems needed to be solved, and my partner Agent Cooper and I are going to find the answers, even if it killed us. That's what we do. This is our job. This is Jack Ferguson. Some of the stories we bring you are so strange and fantastic that it's hard to believe that it really happened. For obvious reasons, some of the names, dates, and localities have been changed. But our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Operative 132, G-Man. And they did happen here. We hope you'll join us again next time for another adventure. Until then, remember folks, the men from within the Earth are among us. This episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour starred Jack Ferguson, Brian Bedell, Stuart Moyer, Kat Peterson, Heidi Wetzel, Kyle Stroud, Brianna McDowell, Christian Wheeler, Brandon Kane, and John Kissinger as James Moore, CEO. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese. The mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios. It was written by Brandon Kane. Produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions. I'm Brian Bedell, and I play FBI Agent Cooper on Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. While our show is a lot of fun to create, each episode costs a lot of time and money to produce. So if you liked what you heard, please subscribe to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour on your preferred medium in order to catch new episodes as they're released. And if you have the means, please consider donating to our show at patreon.com slash diabolicaltales. Patrons will help us continue to produce the show, and will also give you access to bonus materials and additional content. You can also find us at diabolicaltales.com. And thank you for listening to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour.